We move to another important speaker. We are joined by Dr. R. Bala Subramaniam, member, HR Capacity Building Commission, Government of India, and founder of Swami Vivekananda Youth Movement. And we're also joined by Mr. Rajesh Kumar Pathak, Secretary, Technology Development Board, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. We'll be hearing from them a, a lot uh, for sure. But before that, let's have a perspective from Dr. Bala Subramaniam on his vision on digital strategies for transforming public health in India, technology, governance, and service delivery. And Dr. Bala Subramaniam uh, uh, is a uh, uh, has been working in this grassroots level for the healthcare and overall social issues for quite many years, and his insights will be very important for all of us. Welcome, Dr. R. Bala Subramaniam. Over to you. Your thoughts on this particular subject. And thank you so much, uh, Sovik, for inviting me to participate in this. Uh, after Dr. Saraswat's uh, very detailed and comprehensive presentation, we discovered virtually every dimension of uh, the way technology can interface public health. Uh, I must confess, it has left us very little to share now. But I'm going to bring in a completely different perspective because technology and the word technology brings in, have, having worked with indigenous tribal communities in very remote areas of India, technology, even, even a pen is technology. So even the understanding of technology needs to be contextualized in the Indian perspective. It's it, the moment we say technology, we think of internet, we think of high-end material, we think of so many other things, and then uh, we have we think technology is a solution provider. But I believe technology is an enabler, and I would like to bring a completely different mind uh, perspective to this whole discussion. Uh, obviously, technology, like uh, Dr. Sarswat mentioned, has to address the challenge of access, availability, and affordability. Not necessarily everything, not necessarily in the same order. But we need to ask ourselves, uh, technology at what level of care? And that is going to define how we use and apply technology. Is it for the primary level, is it secondary, tertiary? Obviously, secondary and tertiary are very easy to understand for us because medicine today, uh, my colleagues in the medical sector will uh, we all become so dependent on technology-assisted diagnosis, technology-assisted interventions, that we really think that uh, we have become so part of it. We don't even uh, understand how we could operate. And I, as a medical student, uh, the only technology we had is a thermometer, a stethoscope, and a BP apparatus. And we, we had to learn to organize ourselves around that. But today, there's a plethora of material that we can have at the secondary and tertiary level. So I'm going to add a new A, along with access, availability, and affordability. What India's public health systems require is accountability. And how do you use technology and deploy technology to bring in this dimension of accountability? And I would like to narrate from a personal experience that as part of my policy think tank, Gram, that we actually deployed and demonstrated how people can actually use the technology that they can work with and control. Because technology imported from outside, from urban areas to rural areas or tribal areas, would mean very little because you got import, you got to import the technologist also. So it's not just technology or technological innovations, but the technologist also has to come in from outside. That is not contextually relevant. To me, Technology is something which people should be able to deal with, relate to, and apply it in their everyday life. And we tried an experiment, and I want to share how we uh, try to do this. And I think it's critical to understand technology from this different dimension. Every other dimension is critical and important. But from the primary healthcare dimension, we need to bring in accountability of the public health systems, not only public, even private health systems, to the people whom we serve. And secondly, we also need to get ownership in the in the healthcare investments the state is doing by the common citizens. Citizens cannot think that they can smoke, they can drink, they can use drugs, and the state will provide for my interventions whenever they, I need to get de-addicted. Now, that's a wrong co connotation. I have to take responsibility and control over my healthcare, and I need to understand that the state will only come that far in supporting me, and I, unless I own up the problem, and I also own up the solution, I cannot just hold the state responsible for interventions. So we tried this very simple experiment even before smartphones came in, maybe seven or eight years ago. What we did was very simple. We said everybody has a cell phone and that is a World Bank report got published and that's what actually precipitated this thinking in my mind. Saying that Indians, in India we have more toilets than, uh, we have more cell phones than number of toilets. That has changed now but I'm talking of eight or ten years ago when they published that report. And we said if people have got, why see it as a problem? Not having toilets is a problem. But why not we see having cell phone as a provider of a solution? And people had got used to cell phones, the analog cell phones, not the smartphones. They knew how to use it, they knew how to operate it. 
So we said, can we build on what people have? The technology they have is an ordinary phone. Can we build on that? And so we said, we, did, we worked with providers, especially public sector providers in the district of Mysore, a very popular experiment. We worked with the government health system only. We worked with the Arogya Raksha Samitis. We worked with the village health and sanitation uh, nutrition committees of the panchayat. We said, can we use a technology enabled community accountability process? Can you use a technology enabled governance intervention? It's a, it's a fascinating governance intervention with extraordinary benefits that we saw. Even we didn't expect it. So we had a simple questions dealing with several areas of the healthcare system, beginning with infrastructure, easy for people to relate. Is there a building? Is there a lab? Is there equipment? Then the people manning the infrastructure, is a doctor available? How many days is he available? Then the programs, how many outpatients does he see? How many inpatients does he see? Do deliveries happen here? Simple questions like that. And then the community outreach, does he go to the Anganwadi? Does he go to the uh, uh, schools? So the simple eight responsibilities of a primary health system, is it being delivered? And then the reporting function. So what we did was we said, we will have these questions answered by communities, by people who are using the facility. By the virtue of asking these questions, they'll start understanding the system. And we started off with 86 questions, too much to handle, but with experience brought it down to 36, covering these generic areas, including the uh, untied funds that come under the National Health Mission. Those days it was called NRHM. Only the rural areas were covered. And the fascinating uh, success story was we not only actually we, all the information that is fed would be asked the IVRS system. The IVRS would call up designated mobile numbers, either belonging to the panch local panchayat member or to the village health and sanitation committee member or the Aragya Raksha Samiti member or a randomly chosen patient of that month. And they would be asked this question and their answers would be binary, zero or one. So if the answer zero, it is not there. If it is one, it is there. And other answers would be numeric. For example, how many patients you saw today? 32 or 35. Is the BP apparatus working when you went? Zero, no. One is yes. Was the electricity available? Is the toilet clean? Simple questions like this, covering virtually every aspect that is required for delivering primary health care, like I said. And the fascinating thing was we validated this over a three year process, validated the answers for authenticity, and we found a less than 2% error margin. That is the benefit of community taking ownership and trusting the community to deliver on the results. And they feel very empowered. They feel that I am in control of my public health system. This information goes into a, a software that we had developed into a central server. It is real time. The server is constantly processing information that comes in. On the 10th of every month, 126 primary health centers of the Mysore district, all the data would come in from communities and people. The, the computer would randomly uh, you know, not random, sorry, we would analyze the whole thing and list out, and that's why it's called Aragya Shreni, a listing, a ranking of all the PHCs. Like my PHC could be ranked 22 in the particular district. And in India, we only don't like to see my ranking. We like to see everybody else, you know, like children in school. You know, when I get second rank, I go home and tell my father I came second in the class. My, fathers would not, my father would not be very happy. He would say, who got the first rank? We Indians like to compare. So we would say, we would not only tell the local people, where is your PHC today in this ranking of 126, but where are the other PHCs in a five kilometer radius, which they can relate to. So neighboring PHC is 22, but I am 29. And then I would ask the question, why am I seven behind? I would go to the doctor and ask him. I would ask him, why is something missing? And the doctor would say, I don't have a house to live in. So we had fascinating community ownership interventions where people provided vehicles for transport during labor where people provided houses to doctors, a &Ms, and nurses, where people said, you don't have medicines, we will buy medicines and give you. Where the panchayat owned it up and said, we'll give the first toilet, community toilet in the campus of the PHC. We'll build a compound wall. Initially, the government officials thought it is a policing activity. And soon they learned it's a very powerful community feedback activity. And they started responding to it so beautifully. The DHO would call me up and said, you know, this month, the report has not come to me. Can you give me a report of the status of all the PHCs? So people started participating in the system, the people, we as a facilitating NGO, and the software was what technology that was deployed. People could handle it with the ordinary smartphone that they see in the front end, and that is all they need to handle. They can relate to the ownership, they can relate to accountability, and they started demanding this on the system. And the beauty was the DHO started telling me, I now know which PHC doesn't have a generator. I now know which PHC needs a toilet. I now know which doctor is attending four PHCs at the same time. That is why he's not able to give results. He has to be posted to only one PHC. 
So the government started using this information for planning and evaluations. The people started look, looking at why are somebody else better and why is not my PhD not as good. The doctors started feeling accountable to communities that they were serving and seeking out support because we need to understand health is a collective responsibility. Today, the last two years has demonstrated without public health system in this country, we couldn't have so efficiently managed COVID. As a public health expert, I can say India is possibly one of the finest countries which manage it very well, despite all what people talk. On the field, I have been in the ground, whether it is delivering healthcare or whether it is practical immunization. But what we have not done, we didn't have enough time, or well, the system responded. But did we make the citizens feel involved? Did we make the citizens own up to COVID appropriate behaviors? Did we make the citizens feel they have a responsibility in this entire uh, process? Not as much. So we need to design and deliver healthcare, which not only uh, ensure access, affordability, and uh, availability, but also brings in accountability of the system both ways. Citizens are as accountable to their health as the healthcare system is accountable to provide and facilitate that healthcare. When it work, at a time when we're talking of wellness, when we're talking at a time when we're talking of universalizing healthcare, I believe the biggest experiment the government of India has introduced is health and wellness centers. And we seem to be going faster than what we had planned. More than 220,000 centers will soon get established. And if we can get communities to own it up, communities to hold these centers accountable and to mutually enforce this accountability on each other, bringing in universal healthcare in a nation as complex and diverse as us is not an impossibility. We need to get all stakeholders together and getting stakeholders together is possible only when you can get technology to bind us. Technologies people can use, appropriate and own. And, and technology which are already used to in a different dimension, not necessarily something new. So while other technological interventions are extremely important for curative work, a lot of technological interventions today are important like telemedicine, etc. to ensure access is taken care of, availability is taken care of, and maybe even affordability to some extent is taken care of. We also need simple, not, not heart, path breaking innovation, like extraordinarily uh, complex apps, but very simple, like simple things like this, which can work on ordinary IVR systems and ordinary cell phones, and we can make a big difference. So to me, technology, which can intervene and help in strengthening governance, especially of public health systems, systems which are absolutely, we cannot even negotiate whether we need to provide it or not. Coming from the civil society space, I, I believe that no one mechanism can deliver healthcare to a complex nation like India. We need to partner. We need to get private sector, public sector, and the civil society organizations coming together to collectively hold themselves accountable to reach out to every last man in this country. And for that to happen, I think getting communities to own up health systems and healthcare processes through the interventions of technology is a great step forward. And we should try to think of that. So I know that uh, the, the limited time that I could make for myself, I have shared a very simple idea but more information on this, etc. Any any of your uh, listeners are interested, they can go to the Gram website, graam.org.in, where this project is explained in detail. A lot of information available, and Gram, I'm sure, as an organization, we're very willing to partner and support this kind of experiments. Now they're trying it in Jharkhand. Different states are reaching out, and if this becomes a community movement, technology-enabled governance-driven community accountability and ownership, then I think. India in proceeding in the right direction with the strengthening of everything else that's happening in the ecosystem. This was one little missing piece, which if we put it in place, I'm sure we'll have a powerful healthcare system which can become a global model.